Today, we're in the beautiful. Beautiful, remote and mysterious city of Kohima Nagaland, high up in the foothills of the Himalayas of Northeast India. During World War II, this area was the hump that American pilots flew from India to China. The Nagas are a small part of the millions of mountain people that live in the hills and mountains of Asia. The scenery is among the most beautiful anywhere in the world reminding me a great deal of western North Carolina, except the mountains are much higher. Many people have asked me the question, why have you gone to hold a crusade in such a remote part of the world? Until a couple of years ago, I'd barely heard of Nagaland. It was only a place on a geography map for me. Then I began to listen to missionaries tell stories of what God was doing in this beautiful and mysterious country. For one thing, I find that here in Nagaland is the largest concentration of Baptists outside of the United States anywhere in the world. The American Baptists came here a hundred years ago and began their missionary work. And today, nearly 70% of the Naga people claim to be Christians. I've already learned that the tribal people of this corner of India are remarkable people. We could learn many lessons in the United States from their way of life. Until a few years ago, they were known throughout Asia as headhunters. Today, because the gospel of Jesus Christ has made such an impact, their headhunting has ceased. The Nagas are great family people. The Naga people also respect older people and take care of them. People here look forward to getting old because all the younger people respect them for their age. There are thousands of people here who profess Christianity as a religion or a culture but who have not received Christ as Lord and Savior. During this past week and during the coming week, Dr. Agba Hawk and I and Cliff Bowers and others of our team will be engaged in meetings from morning till night. I've never seen a people that love to hear a story more than the Naga people. Especially do they love stories about family life back in America. Some people have asked, why do you go so far away from home and hold these crusades throughout the world? First, we go because we've been invited. In all my years of ministry, I've never been under such pressure from a group of God-fearing people as the Naga people to come and help them celebrate the coming of Christianity to Nagaland by holding a crusade. In spite of the many dangers here, and they're very real, we decided to come and encourage these thousands of Christians who love Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And we were repeatedly warned that this was dangerous territory at this particular time. But deep down in our hearts, we felt that this was God's plan and God's will for us. Certainly, Satan does not like the gospel to be taken anywhere in the world. He's going to wage warfare, and we're involved in a great spiritual conflict right here in faraway Nagaland in northeast India. We need your prayers that the hand of Satan will be restrained. The purpose of this program is to proclaim the gospel of Christ. And what is the gospel? The gospel is good news, that God loves you. Whatever your condition, whatever your sins, God loves you. Christ died on the cross for you. And because of his death, Christ can now forgive you of all your sins. Christ can touch your family. He can touch your work. He can touch your body. He can touch your mind. He can touch your soul. Let Christ come into your life today. Notice with me Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. 